on Heister Street in State College, PA, you will find Inspiration, one of many murals of the same name that can be found throughout the world. Inspiration State College is a 90-foot mural featuring the portraits of influential people from the State College community painted by Michael Pilato. Pilato is a globally recognized mural artist known for his portrait murals and humanitarian efforts. He is greatly involved with his local community where much of his most recognized work is located. He has murals in large cities such as New York and Washington, D.C., and also in other countries due to the World Mural Project. How does one become a successful international mural painter? Plato explained how he landed his career as a thriving artist. The reason I think that I really got interested in murals was there used to be a mural in Colorado Alley um, by, done by a guy named York, and it was a eighth grade class, we were taking a hike, we were going past the mural, and me and this girl that I had a huge crush on hid behind a dumpster while the rest of the class went up to the, to the museum up here, the Palmer Art Museum. And we kissed, it was my first real kiss, but I didn't only remember the kiss, I remember the kiss in front of the mural, so it was like a stage for the backdrop of life. And I got very interested in that idea, like taking walls that were ugly and making them into something beautiful and also making memories. Well, I started, my first mural was done in seventh grade. Um, I, I had a great teacher who had a mural class at the mm -hmm. alternative program. And so um, I pretty much painted 20 murals in my school. Pilato also described the process of creating a mural. It depends on what the mural subject matter is, but a mural like this, inspiration, this one looked like it was done in about two years. We have one in Williamsport, Pennsylvania that's 15 times the size that looked like it was done in four years. And I usually have one or two students working with me on that. But the whole town writes me letters. They tell me they think, they think are inspirational. I go through locals and historians. We pick out all those letters. I interview the people. I sketch them. I do drawings. Um, and it depends what time of year it is. Like in the wintertime, which is kind of funny, it's easier to paint sweaters because the paint is thicker. But in 60 degree weather to around close to 70 is the best for portraits. So sometimes, you know, it takes five days to paint one portrait or I can paint four portraits in one day. It's just your mood, the weather. They're all called the same thing and they're called inspiration. And this is all the people that inspired me personally in this community in the state. I have an artist that works with me by the name of Yuri Karabash, who's up here on the mural with the big blue circle on his head. And that's his style of art. He believes energy runs through all of us and he paints abstractly that manner. And around the corner of the building, he painted the big lion's face with the blue ribbons that says, speak out, we will listen, for a big event we had after the Jerry Sandusky mm -hmm. tragedy. I'm lucky enough that Yuri Karabash is a master. Um, he's probably the best artist that I've ever met. He can paint in many styles, so he was able to match my style um, very easily. My favorite painting is this. Andrew. Eugene Letter with a hat there. We donated a park in town here called Letterer Park. He's also a Penn State Renaissance person, and when you're a Renaissance person, that means you do a lot of things, like he was a lawyer, a sculptor, a jazz musician, a painter, and a philanthropist. And in the park that he donated here in town, sadly, the day after he died, a little boy was hit by a car right in front of that park and died instantly. So I called the boy's mother and said, you know, I don't know where you go when you die, but I think Mr. Letter and your son were taking that walk together. So I painted William Andrew Freeman in front of Mr. Letter, put love on the chalkboard, and all of his friends and family and teachers came out and painted love. And his mom sits across the street and says it's like having lunch with her boy. Mm -hmm. So that was my first experience with art and healing, and I pretty much was hooked from then on. You know, the murals I'm hoping help with community and economic development because it promotes tourism. Um, but the most, in my opinion, it's the art and healing. And you know, like I'm, I'm an R8 artist, but you know, we're working with kids in Moldova that can paint circles around me. Um, but it's not about the artist. We're just a paintbrush. The community is the artist, you know what I mean? So we're so the most favorite thing that I do, for example, there's ten alumni up there that were killed in the Twin Towers. Um, the one woman said the first thing she remembered about her husband was going to this bar. The other side of the bar was this guy wearing the ugliest green shirt she ever saw. So she looked at her friend and said, Look at that ugly green shirt. The man and woman looked at each other, it was love at first sight. So he's the only angel up there with the ugly green wings. You know, and so it's like these kind of stories that if you can make somebody smile on a day that they didn't think they could smile, that's the power of art, you know what I mean? And that's what I love most of all about the work. Like, the old man here. But the murals are never finished. 
but all my murals are living murals that are called. So when children come and put their handprints in, you know, I say that, you know, one day you could be painted in the mural as well. And they're all, and the ones we're doing in different places in the world, the same with every mural. So then the last two years, I actually stopped my world mural to help with the healing here at Penn State after the Jerry Sandusky scandal. So I've been here a lot. Like, I never did handprints with students until then. And the students' handprints will end when the fourth year of the last students are here for, you know, that were part of this awful thing here that happened at Penn State. Um, the reason I did that is, you know, a lot of our culture was attacked um, all over the world. And if you look at this mural, and when the students come and get the tours of the mural, it really shows what our culture is, you know, the amazing people that are here. Um, and they were really beat up bad over the last two and a half years here at Penn State. Plato has broken records and exceeded boundaries with his mural painting. His mural in Romesport titled Inspiration Lycoming County holds the record for the world's largest outdoor portraiture mural, among other achievements. And more handprints than any mural, more panels than any mural. There's like five records on it. I think the fifth record though is the most amount of records broken or <laughs> something <laughs> silly like that. <laughs> in addition, Plato is credited with creating the first 3D mural. When you put 3D glasses on certain sections, you can actually go into the wall. I'm the first artist ever to paint 3D and a glyph style. It's so, um, math and it's uh, layering and painting things that are behind each other, pulling it out, dropping it into perspective. Red and blue switches. It's actually, it would take me about an hour to explain. It takes about four months to do one painting. Um, that's like this big to do a 3D painting. So. In the United States, Palato has murals in New York, Virginia, Washington, and all over Pennsylvania. We're working one on one in Norway. Um, the places that are we're going to be going to are Africa, Sweden, Poland, Burma. I did one in Burma. Um, and all the murals, including this one, will connect on the internet to make one huge mural called the World Mural. And it kind of shows how we all love the same. My favorite spot that I'm going to be doing it would be Burma. Um, when I came up to put the woman that's now in Jerry, Jerry Sandusky's chair, Dora McQuaid, I was actually in Burma painting Aung San Suu Kyi, who's the Nobel Peace Prize winner there that was on house arrest, and her story and the people around her and what that people in that country are doing now from what it used to be four years ago is just unbelievably amazing. It's like awe-inspiring, and it kind of shows you that you can do anything. So I'm really excited to do that. Paletta parted with some advice to anyone desiring to pursue a career in art. Um, if you're interested in being a mural artist or any kind of artist, it's always best to hone your skills in drawing first. Also, to get out, if you want to be a public artist, you have to be able to speak to people. So you got to, you know, to get a job as a waiter or waitress, um, to something in public where you're speaking a lot. Also, no fear in a way, you know, because you will get. When you're in, and when you're in the public eye, sometimes sad things happen, like stalkers and certain things like that. So you got to be prepared. Um, and it's not about money. That's the biggest thing. You know what it's about is being very passionate about what you do and loving what you do.